All right, so we're on Smith Street in a place called Battersby, Carroll Gardens. I remember when this place was patois like 14, 15 years ago. Lots changed since then. Brooklyn culinary scene's on fire. So much talent's moved out here. Neighborhoods are just expanding and opening up. So, you know, word came down through the, my foodie grapevine that, hey, there's this really good place called Battersby. Two chefs, they're killing it. Ah, I, mean, I take the F train the wrong direction. I'm coming into Brooklyn for a change. The place is five minutes to my apartment, basically, and I walk in this little tiny restaurant, little open kitchen in the back, I don't know, 25 seats. Food was amazing. I'm like, out of that kitchen, this food? So, they have another place called Dover. I'm like, let me try their other spot out and see what that is. Same thing, on point, the whole way. I mean, old school, great, great food. So that's the story today. Mike take the F train to Brooklyn for the first time in a long time. Two young American chefs that are on fire with great resumes, and two great reasons to visit Carroll Gardens, Battersby and Dover. Brooklyn is in the house. I'm Mike Colomeco, industry insider. Been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals family of brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian Durham wheat semolina and pure spring water slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at Cento.com. Two of the best meals I had in 2014 were at Dover and at Battersby. These guys are on fire. And it's funny because at a time when so many young chefs are moving towards small plates in the Mediterranean or New Nordic or Spanish, these guys are just cooking what they know, which is incredibly detailed, delicious, old school French. Just layers upon layers of flavor, lots of technique on the plates. Really, these are two of my favorite restaurants this year. Can't wish these guys enough luck. So this is a pressed foie gras terrine made with foie gras confit. There's a layer of foie gras, a layer of quince and apple, another layer of foie gras, and another layer of quince chili. Roasted lady apple glazed with duck chew. This is served with our house-made brioche. A lot of flavor, a lot of texture. This is a taglarini, and it has Truffle butter, a little bit of ham on de perry, and then we finish it with uh, black truffle on top. Kind of like a French pasta. <laughs> Next, we'll go down with the short rib. These are braised, wow. very traditionally. A lot of red wine. Essence of meaty goodness. Yes. What we do at the restaurant is we do yeah. uh, full roasted chicken for two. The legs we remove and confit and incorporate them into like a truffle chicken salad that is the first part of the dish. And then the breast we roast on the bone and um, present that with grilled radicchio as like a second service. So we kind of break up one dish into two parts. Bingo, let's go. So butchering to be done. I gotta tell you, two of the best meals I've had this year um, at Battersby and Dover towards the end of the year in Brooklyn. Hey, love to Brooklyn. And everybody freaks out, right? TV land, they're all like, there's so much salt. It's like, yeah. dude, it's gonna come off when it gets cooked. So season liberally with a quarter cup of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, where'd you guys meet? Well, we first initially met in culinary school, and then uh, quite a few years later, Joe was working there already. I started working at the Essex House, Alain Ducasse at the Essex House. And then, you know, we just kind of recognize each other and work together and stuff. What brought you to Battersby? Because that was your first first spot. Well, I think what happened is after I spent my time at Gramercy and after Walker spent his time at Blue Hill, we decided to take our career to the next step and we looked for 
executive chef positions. And we each found one that I think was, was a good next step. I became the executive chef at Anella in Greenpoint, and Walker became the executive chef at Vanderbilt in mm. uh, Prospect. Yeah, Saul Bolton's place. Yeah. And we did that for a while. And after about a year of being the chef of a restaurant but not the owner, we you know, kind of decided that we need to take the next step beyond that. And we're like, you know what, we could do this. Mm. We could do this with a little bit of money and I think we can turn some heads doing it. And I just kind of stick it in that sweet spot so yep. it's kind of searing the side. Thyme and, and rosemary, um, big piece of garlic. Just kind of brown the butter. It here, man. The chicken gets the treatment, huh? It's getting a lot of love already. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, transfer it to a, a 400 degree oven. Bingo. In the meantime, what you've made is a confit of the leg done duck style. Salt, cure it with herbs, whatever, whatever, for a day exactly. or two. Rinse it and then into, into duck fat, real low and slow. Yep. Which gives us this, now it's off the bone. Yeah, we so just- So it's a boneless confit. Yeah, we just shred the meat, just Fold in a little bit of uh, a little bit of mayo, a little bit of truffle paste, black truffle paste, raw celery brunoise. Delicious! I love celery, man. Um, a little bit of uh, chopped parsley here, and then we're just gonna season it up really good with pepper, uh, a little bit of salt, olive oil, sherry vinegar, and basically just making chicken salad. When we were coming up with this dish, we were kind of like, well, this is nice, it tastes good, but it's not very attractive. <laughs> so we decided to basically cover the whole thing with shaved vegetables. So we have some celery root and then some green apple that we're gonna shave raw, punch it out. We're gonna do some just really simple white button mushroom, which is like a super underappreciated yep. vegetable. It has a great earthy flavor. And then we'll just cover everything with this little circles. The final thing is we're gonna do some fresh black winter truffles. Well, that elevates it. And then since I didn't season any of these, I just douse the whole top with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of sherry vinegar, some fleur de sel, and some pepper. That's a ton going on in that plate, man. That's a lot. So now just to make the jus stronger, we're gonna cook these little yeah, winglet pieces to. in here. Talk about the food, because it really reminds me of kind of like classical roots French cooking, modernized slightly, but you guys talk about it. I don't want to put words on it. Kind of deglaze this with some chicken stock. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the base is definitely like what you consider like classical French. In the meantime, gratin. we'll prepare the gratin. We've had great success with starting with like a classical French idea and kind of leaning it a little bit towards, you know, another flavor profile and, you know, we've had good, really good results with that. But so. to your credit, a lot of the kitchens I eat in where they're tinkering, it's really literally hit and miss course by course with a fair amount of misses that you're paying for. And, I, you know, I ate almost the entire menu here one night at Dover and it was just like, the tech, you guys have chops, man. I remember saying, these guys have technique. You're, you're solid. So in here we have uh, a few different root, root vegetables. This is reduced cream. It's been reduced by half, so it's kind of a double cream with some crushed black truffles in there. And then we have some uh, Com Comte cheese, which we're just gonna lay over it. What a great dish. I mean, that's a, that could be dinner. The other accompaniment is grilled radicchio. Uh, we season it with balsamic vinegar and sherry vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and charred on the grill. And that kind of the acidity and bitterness from this adds a nice counterplay to the richness of the gratin mm. and the richness of the chicken. On cue. That's how we double check our seasoning. Tasting. It's pretty good. A little bit of chicken juice. Doing the salamander to kind of re- It's gonna tighten up that glaze now like a lacquer. Exactly. This is the grilled radicchio that's been Balsamic, olive oil. The last element here is just a little bit of raw radicchio leaves in the vinaigrette again. So we're playing around with texture. Yeah, we flavors. do a lot of cooking and raw. Right. And then a little, little bit of olive oil. Thank you. All right, Joe. That's our simple chicken for two. <laughs> That's your simple chicken for two. Simply Thank prepared. you. Yeah, yeah. I can see the, I can see the simplicity. 
nice, yeah, we want a nice dark color. So back in my day in New York in the 80s, there was like no good bread in restaurants. It was a sin. It was like, there was no good commercial bakers. Very, very few places were baking. And then we began to get really good bakeries in New York, like Balthazar, like Tomcat, like a whole assortment of artists and bakers that are wonderful. Sullivan Street, right? But now I'm seeing so many restaurants run by, you know, young chefs that have their in-house bread programs. Like, it's not good enough that you can deliver this. We want to do it in-house. Yeah, we do. We, we actually make a lot of breads and pastries at the restaurant. And that's one of the things that Walker and I decided right when we open batters is that we really want to have a house-made signature bread that we can serve at the start of every meal. It's a really part, important part of the meal for us and it's like one of the first things that you taste at a restaurant so we yeah. just want to make sure we got something that was good, it was hot, tasty and a little bit different than what other people are doing here. This is actually, it's funny you mentioned Sullivan Street Bakery, that's one of my favorite bakeries in the city. This bread is actually modeled after one of their breads, uh, Stecca. It's a rustic, Italian, soft, kind of baguette-shaped bread. It's it's rather wet, yeah. and, and it's it's great uh, because uh, when you put it in the oven, it releases all that steam. And, and you know, anybody that knows a little bit about bread will tell you that the steam is what helps give the bread the gelatinization of the crust, yep. gives it that rise, yep. and it gives it that nice color. Yeah, so this is, we're, I guess we're about an hour and a half later, you can start to see, if you look closely in the bread, you see those little pockets of bubbles is going to help give it that nice soft texture on the inside. And then, you know, to go along with our Mediterranean flavor here, we have some uh, dried oregano that we just kind of put on top of the bread. So, yeah, we got some, some Florida cell that just goes on top of it. And this is actually just one part of our uh, bread service that we do here. We serve this alongside with a house-made cracker that we roll out on pasta rollers and uh, we season with um, you know, poppy seeds and, and Florida cell and roasted garlic. And it's served alongside this with a few condiments. And it's free. Everybody gets one. Because they charge your bread now, you know that. You oh, yeah. Across the inside of the Williamsburg Bridge. I know all about it. I'm here so often, I'm like, really? Three dollars, five dollars, whatever, I'll pay, you know, whatever. But good, it's free here. It's free, bread's free and good. Cool. All right, the next dish we're doing is seared sea scallops, which are gonna be served with carrots. The carrots have been cooked in sugar and finished with a little bit of uh, miso for that classic combination of miso, carrot, orange. So the point of view of the food here, I tried to mimic with the wine list. I wanted things that were complementary to what Joe and Walker are doing in the kitchen. So as usual, when I'm putting a list together, I'm looking for high acid, light fruit, uh, non-interventionist wines. <laughs> wines that are kind of made on the yes. vine and it crush, you mean? Yes. Those wines? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm looking for. I don't want anything that's really uh, manhandled. And we're gonna finish it with some white and black sesame seeds. Yeah, that's a lot going on. So we got miso, caramel, carrots, acid from the orange. A little bit of uh, sliced scallion. And we're gonna just re-season them a touch. We're going Austria? Yes, this is uh, the Ott. Amberg Grüner Veltliner, 2013 vintage. This is also a biodynamic wine, because why not? Uh, <laughs> the gentleman is called Mr. Veltliner by his colleagues because he specializes in this. Uh, it's Niederösterreich, of course, around, mm. around by the lake. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, crazy minerality. Good from oysters all the way down to chicken. <laughs> kind of wine that could take you through an entire meal here very easily. And then we have that miso paste, and we're gonna just spread that onto the bottom of the plate. This is Beaujolais Village, but. Oh, it's um, a Village? Yes. Very low alcohol, beautiful. My staff teases because every time I bring something new in, they're like, oh, high toned purple fruit, floral. <laughs> like, yeah, you got me. That's, that's it, that's right. <laughs> pretty much everything. But uh, that's, and the earthiness and the minerality, a little bit of funk on it. Hallmarks of really good gamut. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is great. Mm -hmm. Scallops down. And these are just raw carrots cut on a mandolin in ice just, water. Yeah, raw carrots soaked in ice water. Texture, flavor, makes a little crunch. Curl up a little bit like that. And that's it. Beautiful. Beautiful plate of food. This is a dish that we actually do on the menu. It's a roasted uh, filet of Chatham cod. My sous chef Danny has cooked nicely here. Um, we salt the, the cod 
firm it up ahead of time. Exactly, so it's like 1% of the weight of the fish in salt. Um, and what that does is it takes all that the extra moisture out and it just, uh, for me, it makes like a, a much better texture. Talk about this potato because it's crazy. This How is, many layers of potato do we have This is, uh, when done properly, is about 40 layers. We cooked that at like 225 for several hours and then we pressed that overnight with weight. So open batters with like no PR firm, this little hole in the wall, open kitchen in the back. You're thinking, I hope somebody comes in. What month of the year did you open? We opened in October, October 17th, um, I think of 2011. And um, we opened the doors and we we're kind of slow for the first month. And we we're, you know, a little bit concerned about <laughs> <laughs> what was gonna happen. It's Look at that sauce. Look at that sauce. That's yeah, a, man. That's the guy who made it. Love it, man. <laughs> no idea how I'm going to do this yeah, potato, but I'm going to try. Oh, look at that. Look at that. These are friendly. Look at that. I'm thinking it's going to like squish all over and fall apart. Nah. Fool. All right. I don't know. I need glasses. Can you guys see that? Can you see those layers? Someone say yes. 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 We can see it. That's love. And then what, what became really popular at Battersby is we did something called a uh, spontaneous tasting menu. And so we started getting a lot of reservations for it. And that's great. So like half the room on any given night was signing up for the full on tasting menu. Yeah, some Which shows it was serious foodies, were in your hands, chef. Go yeah. for us. Yeah. Slice them fairly thick so you can get the texture of the scallop. Just lightly torch. Just caramelizes it a little bit. Makes it a little sweeter. For this, we don't actually use any salt in this dish because of the caviar and the uni. Uni. So it's like the natural yeah, salinity. Yeah, uni's, uni's salty. We also use uh, sea beans. It's kind of the other uh, application of salt. This is uh, hackleback caviar. It's a sturgeon, American sturgeon caviar. A little bit of dill. And we have some creme fraiche with champagne and lime. Lime zest. That's it. Who was the first reviewer? Platt? No, I think. Who, who was the, the first in batters? I think our first real review was the New Yorker magazine. That little thing in the front, which is yeah, the, oh, that, was, that was good. And then um, somewhere in the summer, Bon Appetit put us on their top 10 list of best new restaurants in the country. And that was big for us. And there's just a few raw garnishes and herbs that we'll finish the plate with. Two man kitchen? Three. Three. Yeah, I must have missed whoever the third one was. Two times. It is tiny. It's How many small. burners? Like what's the space? Six burners. I mean, it's like not, it's, it's ghetto. It's small, yeah. It's like a New York apartment kitchen. Yeah. There's, yeah, basically. There's one I, mean, I got five burners on it's my 36 place. by 36 is the, is the cooking surface. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's just like a New York stove if you have a decent yeah. stove. One oven, that's it. <laughs> and from that, this comes. That's great. We are going to do the passion fruit cheesecake. Okay. Which is absolutely delicious. Okay. First, we're going to start out with a verju gelée. It is the it's a wine grape. Type. Yeah, uh, without alcohol, right? right? It's right. the young grapes. Right. And, and then we disc. have some pine nut crackers. Right here, Can they're you grind cookies. The up? Yeah, it's um, ground up pine nuts with some sugar. So that is just going to go bouncy, bouncy right on there. And this is our monster bag of cheese. So this is not your typical cheesecake. Oh, hello, this is a um, a very liquidy cream cheese, sweetened condensed milk, and passion fruit here. Ooh. And then we have some passion fruit curd. And we get another pine nut cracker on top. And then the last little. Well, that's helpful because you'd have to do that to yeah. eat it anyway. Yep. So true. And then we get a nice little. Smart. I like it. Beautiful little stained glass that's window. Cool. We can see the yellow on the. Um, yeah, that's through cool. that. And yeah, I, I really love this plate. It's very beautiful. Smart. God. Why don't I eat desserts? Look what I'm missing. This is so good. I love the kind of liquid cheesecake idea too. Look at that. Mm. 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 That is great. We're into fall mode, fall winter mode right now, and we're doing a, a cocktail called the Ellie, a bourbon based cocktail. I'm on board. Let's All go. Right. All right, here we go. So we start with some black walnut bitters, three dashes of that. Okay. And then we do a dash of uh, good old Angostura. We have some maple simple syrup here, quarter of an ounce. Half ounce of chinar. Gotcha, this funny Italian. 
the artichoke. Artichoke thing, right. I haven't figured it out. I actually drink that stuff. I keep a bottle in my fridge because you never know. This stuff is great just on the rocks. I know. It, yeah. I keep it cold. I love yeah. it. It's a great kind of Amaro. And then we do an ounce and three quarters of Eagle Rare Bourbon. I know the bottle. Yeah. We'll crack some ice. It smells good. Yeah. We'll let that from here. We'll let this cook in the glass for a little bit. What we do is take some Laphroaig, some nice peaty scotch, smoky scotch, and we atomize the glass. With that, we have it in a little atomizer. Um, add some ice to this. We're gonna garnish with the fresh orange peel, so I like to just peel it over the top, get, let the oil get in there. Yeah, there's a lot of oil in there. The Ellie. The Ellie, for grandma. And then... You get some of those esters and oils. All the orange oil, which makes a huge difference. Yeah, so we got scotch that's misted on there, orange on the outside, there this beautiful are. concoction. It's a nice color, huh? I like brown drinks. Yeah. Yeah. And surprisingly walnutty. I mean, that, that walnut's there all the way through. It's great. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Delicious. Anytime. Thank you. All right, tell me about, so obviously we've got a duck breast. Is it Magray? This isn't Magray. This is uh, from a Pekin duck. This one, that's what I was decided to um, like So I'm gonna just go ahead and season it. I usually do a little cracked pepper on the flesh side of it. And then I kind of stick with salt on the skin because it's gonna be living on the skin for a while. You know, after we were about a year in at Battersby, that's when, and at that point, we were pretty much filling up every night of the week. I and mean, we only had 28 seats, it was easy to do. It just made us look like we were really busy all the time. But we were, and we, it wasn't like uncommon to have a line out front of the restaurant at 5.30. And then I just have some garlic and a little bit of a thyme sprig in there too. And it was time too because we, you know, we wanted to do more and we wanted to expand our staff and we wanted to, you know, just in the sense of growing. So we started thinking about it and we, we looked at a couple of places and we were approached with a couple of offers to do, you know, some collaborations with other companies, but we kind of just wanted to stay, you know, on our own. Um, and we saw this space on Court Street, which is about five minutes away from Battersby. And uh, we liked being close and there's also just like a not really nice big storefront with big windows on the corner. It's on the corner. It's always good. Um, the rent was a little bit more than we wanted to pay, but we just, we really wanted the space, so we went for it. So we're just gonna arrange these knives on the plate. These are red radishes, and red radish. these are Hakurai turnips, which is a Japanese variety that are small and sweet, and um, they're really tender too. They're not quite as fibrous as so you got this beautiful glaze that's... Yeah, I don't want to waste right, any of this. Right, it's got so much so flavor in it. Just kind of go back and give everyone a little Good coat. Love. Yeah. Buttered chicken stock, some turnip jus in there for good measure. There you go. And then these caramelized guys are kind of put on there too. These are daikon radish. Daikon, so the big white Japanese radish, but in that same kind of radishy turnipy. Yeah, it's all the kind of the same family. Crunchy root vegetable. Bingo. Gas streak, old school. The last thing is we're just gonna put raw radishes and turnips all over the place. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful, man. That's a lot of work. That's classic old school, man. Got to be done. We're picking ducks. This is like a classic. Long Island, I mean, this is just yeah. classic old American duck. It's delicious. The duck eats like butter, but the sauce is great. And I'm so happy to be in a restaurant on this side of the bridge and see like a sauce program, like simmered bones, brought down reduction, terms like gastrique. That sauce is great. This is a ripe banana. That is the key to the banana split. I love bananas. So this is just a shoe that we piped really shoe. big. Pat a shoe, yeah. So just lay some bananas in there. And then we're going to add a cocoa Chocolate. nib praline. Cocoa what am I? Cocoa nib praline. Cocoa nib praline. So it's like a fudge sauce, but we make it with cocoa nibs. So this is a pineapple ice cream. Chocolate semi fredo, and then these are just mint chocolate chip plugs. Um, and then it gets filled with uh, whipped cream. 
And then we finish it with peanut brittle. Yeah, so that's why it's called a banana split, because like everything, like everything is in it. Everything I want in a peanut or a banana split. And then flip it over. It's a light dessert. Very Diet light. Dessert. And this is a cherry and um, amaretto sauce. So that's it. That is it. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Good lord. Good lord. I mean, I've got everything in here that I love. I got ripe bananas, crunch, semi fredo, more crunch, patachu. The only thing that's like a little relief is the, this cherry sauce is kind of sour ish, not super cloyingly sweet. This is like insane. This is like stoner heaven, man. It was called, what do you call this again? Uh, profiterol for two. Profiterol for two, without a hint as to that's it. Yes. You're not telling anybody what's in it. You're just like, don't worry about it, we'll take care of the rest of it. It's a surprise. Yeah. Superb restaurant. Congratulations to both of you, Matt. Great. Thank you. It's over. Two reasons to take the F train to Carroll. Come to Carroll Gardens, man. F train gets you here. Even Grandpa did it. It's worth it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Till next week. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites. From our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian Durham wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com.